Hey everybody. So I was out walking this morning and I saw this uh, fine piece of machinery here. It's a wine fridge. Really small one. Looks like it's a, an E-Wave brand. <clears throat> Haven't looked at it at all, so you'll be the first to see what I see. Let's open the door. It was raining, so I just let it dry off in the garage. <clears throat> oh boy. Uh, looks like someone's tried to work on this thing. Some light. So it looks like, excuse me, up here we have our control that someone was mucking with. Looks like, oh boy, looks like maybe the thermal overload for the compressor. Yeah. Someone's worked on this, huh? Let's have a look at the back. Kind of a similar story back here. So it looks like we have a, an LG compressor and it looks like someone took the PTC relay, relay off the back of the compressor for whatever reason. Three compressor terminals are exposed. And it looks like we're dealing with, uh, like I said, an E-Wave. Model MCWC30MCG. Refrigerant is R134A, 105 watts. Uh, can we discern a date? Uh, maybe March of 2012 is just a guess though. Or it could be December of 2003. Who knows? Maybe it doesn't really matter. All right, so let's try to piece this thing back together. So because someone touched it, I don't, we gotta figure out where to start. Uh, let me look inside cabinet. Just make sure the control is all in one piece. Kinda looks like it is. Doesn't seem like anybody tried to mess with it. It's an on off switch. So I'm guessing someone was messing with the compressor. Going to go out on a limb and venture it wasn't starting. So let's start on the back by the compressor compartment. So let's start with a resistance test on our compressor terminals. So you see we have three pins there. They might be labeled, they might not. It's hard to read, but this is not rocket science. So generally speaking, you're going to have three terminals like you see here. You have that one down there, there, and there. And the terminals are going to be uh, run, start, and common. So the resistance between common and run is going to be your lowest. The resistance between start and run is going to be your highest. And the resistance between start and common is going to be in the middle. And generally speaking, the resistance between common and run plus common and start is start is the resistance between run and start. So I realized that was a little confusing, but if you can go if you go online, you'll see pretty easy to understand diagram. So I've got my little baby fluke meter here. Really, I'm more than anything, I'm concerned about direct shorts to ground. So let's check for that first. So I'm gonna hook my meter probe to the ground here. Just gonna touch each terminal. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing, so that's good. We don't want any direct shorts to ground. That would be bad. That was the case, that would mean our compressor is shorted and the compressor is no good. Now, let's just, for fun, let's test the resistance between the terminals and see if we can ID them. Not a whole lot of space here, so I'm gonna try to do this so you guys can see, but may not be so lucky. So let's do the bottom terminal to top right. Come on. More difficult to do this one handed. Hey, well, I'll just read off the readings to you guys. How about that? Let's do top left to bottom. That's a, 
about, what was it? So that's 7.4 ohms. Let's do top left to top right. That is 14.7 ohms. Okay. This is, come on. Seven point seven ohms. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? That's one of these was read wrong, maybe. This meter is also not the greatest. So at least we're not sure to grind. That, that's our primary concern. So let's put this back together and just see what happens. So this is going to be our overload. And this goes on there. That was loud, buddy. Thank you. That goes on there like that. So this is going to go on the bottom, which is likely our common terminal, like so. This is going to go on like that. All right, so let's give her a shot. Let's see what blows up. Gonna wheel over my power cord. We are plugged in. I think there's an on switch inside. Let me go uh, flick that so we get some action here. Okay, just heard it click. I think that may have been our overload tripping. Let's see if we hear it go again. Sometimes it takes a few minutes to reset. And the way these, uh, these starters, these PTC relays work is, let's try to click again. Anyway, so the way they work is they're designed to energize the start windings for a split second, um, just to get the compressor going and then de-energize. Yep, there it goes. So either our compressor is locked up or there's something wrong, most likely with that PTC relay, that black component on there, which is labeled P6R8MC Looks like OR0, wait, oh yeah, OR0309. So when that starter goes bad, that PTC or PTC relay starter, call it what you want, this is the typical symptom. Again, there could be something else going on. Our compressor could be locked up, but nine times out of 10, it's that component. So I'm gonna see if I have a spare laying around. Okay, got the PTC relay on the bench here. And like I said, some, this is a pretty inexpensive part, but sometimes you can save these. I'll show you a little trick that I learned years ago. So we're just going to pop it apart. Now, sometimes you can. Sometimes you take these apart and they disintegrate, but we're going to try something a little bit different here. This clip right here, normally just pops right off. Try not to stab yourself. Like that. Jeez, that was close. Get a screwdriver under there. Get one side. And here's our little disc in here. Yank this out. Sometimes these things come out in pieces. Do you see how dirty that is right there? Clean up those contacts and sometimes these things just start to work again. 
Sometimes. I do emphasize sometimes. You gotta look at these contacts too. See how dirty those are? So we're gonna clean those up. See so if we can get this thing going again. Get a little bit of sandpaper. Now, I should emphasize this is very likely to be a temporary fix. This is not gonna, this thing last you 10 years, is not gonna last you another 10. This might be a couple months, might be a year, who knows. But this, is, this will at least tell you if this is the problem. Just kind of sand it off a little bit. Use a wire brush, achieve the same thing. Get it so it's reasonably shiny. And get the other terminal out too. Actually, that one looks pretty good. So we're not gonna mess with that one. Hit that with a wire brush too. Now you may get lucky and maybe this will last you a while, but just don't count it. I would still order another part. Just hitting it with a wire brush off camera. So, nice and clean now. We'll put the terminal back in. There we go, let's cut it in there, like so. This is the, the brains bad in the operation here. So I think there's a semiconductor or something in here. If anybody knows for sure, let me know how these things work, but it's a temperature sensitive device. That much I do know. So when it's cool, it conducts electricity. When it gets hot, it opens up. You can see that here, you got two pins. One goes to the start, and the other one goes, one goes to the start wire, the other one goes to the start terminal. And that kind of narrows it down which terminal is which too. So just reassembling here. I don't know why these things tend not to last. But that's what it looks like reassembled right there. Put it back together and see what happens. Just putting the cover back on. All set. Okay, so we're back at wine cooler. Let's put our common terminal back on again. And just by knowing how this thing is all wired up inside, that tells me that. I'm sorry. There we go. So this goes on like so, and this is gonna be our start terminal because that's gonna, wait, did I have that right? Something like that. Yeah, so this wire gets hooked up, I'm sorry, it's the other way around. This wire gets hooked up to this side all the time, right? So this is gonna be our run terminal, and this side only gets energized when that disc in the center that you saw conducts electricity. So this is gonna be our start terminal on the left. I realize it's a little confusing, but that's how you tell, or another way to tell. Okay, we're all plugged in here. 
Let's energize it again and see what happens. I think that power switch inside was only for the light because this thing was still clicking when that light was off. Oh, hear that? I hear a compressor. Hear that? She's a running. That was our problem. So this thing was at the curb for really no good reason. I needed, it's probably like a, I don't know, eight or nine dollar part. We'll look it up. I'll leave a link in the description. Now, if you have this problem and you can't get that part, they make these universal kits too. I think I may have covered these in another video. So this one's made by Supco. It's a lot bigger, but this hooks up to the compressor terminal. It's just the same way the other device is, but just sit on the side. So if you can't find what you need or it's too expensive, this is a great alternative. I'll leave a link to this in the description too. So now, just got to put this thing back together because it shouldn't. We'll just see if it cools. So this line is the suction line starting to cool down. And our liquid line on the other side is starting to get warm. So this thing seems like it's functioning. All right, I'm going to button it back up inside and uh, let it run for a while. All right, so got the inside all buttoned back up. Looks like whoever took it apart broke the little, one of the little mounts on the plastic housing for the computer, but it's not a big deal. It's gonna it's secured by a screw. It's not gonna go anywhere. So that's all buttoned back up. So now, um, yeah, this is kind of a boring video, right? This is a pretty easy fix. And I know I've done a few videos on these things. I mean, I see these wine fridges at the curb all the time. And people give them to me, they don't work. They, get fed up, you know, they take everything apart, they get into getting nowhere, and in the end, it's, like I said, so often it's that stupid little starter, aka PTC really, I mean, call it whatever you want, it's all the same thing. So, it's a neat little wine fridge, it's not a super high-end one, it's not in the greatest of shape, it's certainly no better than the one I have inside, so I'll probably give this away or sell it to somebody. But I'll order a new one of those guys first. Anyway, that's probably a wrap. So um, again, links in the description for this starter or an equivalent replacement. Uh, I'll give you a link to that universal one as well. Um, just while we're here, I guess, let's take a look at this thing. This is kind of an appendix. If you're curious how these things work, I can go over it at a very high level. So this is obviously your compressor. This is responsible for pumping the refrigerant through the system. And the way it cools down the inside is this refrigerant goes from a, a liquid. Um, it's actually a superheated gas coming out of this line here. I call it a liquid, not line, but it's actually a compressor discharge line. Comes out of here as a superheated gas, goes to a condenser coil to do a phase change. That's probably built into the unit. When it's running, you may feel, yeah, I can feel the side here getting up here, getting warmer. So it circulates up through a coil on the outside of the unit uh, to phase change from a superheated gas back to a liquid. It then comes back down into here, into this little device here, which is a filter dryer, out into this tiny little tube here. See that little tiny diameter tube? That's called a capillary tube. So that's the metering device for uh, most refrigerators, at least the most lower end ones. So the refrigerant comes in here as a liquid, kind of goes through this filter dryer in here, and then it's forced through this really tiny diameter tube, and it's tiny diameter deliberately to, to, to prevent it from phase changing again. That's kind of a, a artificial, it's a deliberate restriction in the liquid line. This little tube then goes up to the, this little tube here, and goes up to the evaporator coil inside of the unit, where it goes from a really small diameter pipe to a much larger one. So that causes it to phase change from a liquid to a gas. And then this tube right here is where that gas comes back to the refrigerant, kind of cool, and it goes and completes the cycle. And that's pretty much it. So this, this gaseous refrigerant that's, that's cool actually serves as a, a cool, it gives a compressor a cooling effect. It helps cool it down. So this particular model doesn't have any fans anywhere. There's no condenser fan in here. The condenser fan is built into the cabinet. And inside the 
um, the interior of the unit, there's no fan in there either. So it's all done by, I guess, really convection, which is kind of a very simple yet effective design. Very few moving parts, no fans to fail and whatnot. Anyway, realize I'm babbling on here. So if you found this video helpful, please subscribe. Stay safe. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.